Welcome to another episode from the Ed to Ed. On uh, this episode I'm going to be working on a little magnetometer gauze meter and it just uses a simple little Hall effect uh, sensor that's a linear Hall effect sensor. If you folks recall a few episodes ago I did a, a project on measuring the magnetic fields on this uh, Brandy's early mid-20s uh, headphones and had to go through quite a bit of a effort with uh, a mechanical method to measure it because I had a Hall effect sensor but it was a uh, proximity sensor and then ultimately I wound up using the services of a uh, commercially made magnetometer to kind of confirm my uh, mechanical measurements and they, they came out to scale which is kind of nice but what I was hoping to do is get some uh, linear Hall effect sensors uh, they're basically meant to be uh, gauze meters and magnetometers and so I bought some uh, it finally came in the mail and uh, they're, well, they're only three dollars a piece so I got five of them here three bucks a piece so this has got to be one of the cheaper practical projects the uh, Hall effect uh, IC in this case is a um, from Honeywell it's the uh, SS 49E and there's a bunch of different vendors to, to get them from on uh, say uh, eBay or not eBay well eBay too I guess um, I guess I got them from uh, Amazon and they are really super easy to use um, basically it's a Hall effect sensor a little amplifier and uh, some other little conditioning stuff here what's interesting is the uh, the, the outputs pretty linear versus voltages versus uh, magnetic field strength and the null center point is about um, half of your voltage that you apply to it which looks like uh, 5 volts is a pretty good um, spot to be in if you can look through this and so you know if uh, north to south it'll come out at about 2.5 volts very easy to use the um, scale of this guy is about uh, 1.4 millivolts per gauze so you know pretty straightforward um, all I have to do really for this guy is solder up three wires like on here the little beveled side is kind of the side you probably want to use as the um, you can see it in there beveled yeah, probably can there um, is the side to kind of call that, that side I think the uh, the actual uh, wafer is slightly biased towards that side so you get slightly more of a field on that side to measure and it's just three wires two uh, power and a signal and in this case we can hook it up to a uh, bench supply of 5 volts I'll get my polarity right here negative positive positive and uh, hook up my meter here hook up my ground this side on the feed here, uh, power there, meter, power here, and let's see where's my probe? Here it is all these wires. Okay, so about um, about two and a half volts. It, it it tends to be slightly skewed off to the little side there, but if I take a modest magnet here, you can see the values change. I guess it's a little glary there. There we go. And uh, yeah, so there we go. And of course, all you'd have to do there is, um, you know, take your uh, one, uh, your 1.4 millivolts, and uh, you know, do your math and get your, your gauze there. So um, uh, the, of course, the 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 it would be nice if it was um, balanced insofar as. It, your null is at zero and so forth would be really nice and so the next thing I rigged up is this little um, simple little board here and uh, that will give me uh, a little null point I've done some voltage dividers and so forth and it turns out somebody else had already kind of come up with something similar uh, let's see here this site is I can't remember where I got this from um, do I have do I have their website in here? They used a different component. They used um, a uh, 
Let's see what they use. They used, used an Algro uh, 8 or A1302. And I simply copied their um, their website info on here for just as another quick confirmation of what I was doing. I'll have to find out where their. Um, Oh, they don't actually show it in here. Huh. Okay, well, I'll I'll be sure to look up um, their website and everything and put that in the uh, description. But anyhow, uh, they got some nice little write-ups here, and uh, they got some of those nice little charts. The device they uh, chose, uh, the um, voltage division, is uh, like 1.3 millivolts per gauze, and mine's like 1.4 millivolts per gauze, but they're essentially the same thing, and they uh, they talk about uh, hooking it up directly and then doing a voltage divider, which is basically what I got here. They used uh, some slightly different values, and I wound up using a um, a uh, a potentiometer to kind of null it out, rather than some fixed resistors and so forth. But essentially the same thing. So I'll hook this guy all up and do a quick demo on that here. blowing it up in the process. And so this was um, besides power. I, obviously this is a quick little rig up here and I need to uh, come up with something a little more formal. It was just like, can I do this? Power ground, okay, this is the monitor part. And that's the this is the fumble on this real time here. Um, that was our ground. This is the signal. What's nice is they, of course, have that all written up, so I don't have to write it up, right? So I'll just give you guys a link to theirs, and it's essentially the same thing. I, like I said, I just chose some slightly different voltage divider values because. Because why not do things differently, right? And, and then it turns out somebody has already invented the wheel out there. So, got this nice little connector here from the meter. And my meter goes. Is it doesn't really matter. Okay, so I got power, power ground, power ground. Okay. I got all my stuff on my little doohickey here. Get your meter back. So what would be nice is uh, with this guy, I can um, let's see, put it this way. I get a um, a nice little um, center value with this uh, potentiometer. I can adjust it so it's a zero, null it out and it's zero. So basically, you know, uh, you can get a, a negative for north and south. You don't have to think about it and don't have to do a whole lot. You just obviously have to shift the uh, the decimal over for gauze versus volts. So that'd be, uh, you know, 1,000, you know, 100 gauze, something like that. So north, south here. Here's the north. Actually, I guess this is south. Okay, south. This is north. That guy, really, you know, big magnet over here, bigger magnet, this will, this is getting close to saturating it, the, uh, these magnet, these, uh, sensors are only good for about, um, their chart looks like it's only, it goes to a thousand, but it looks like it'll actually go to about fifteen hundred, and then on this bigger magnet I did the demo on earlier, I think it actually saturates, it won't, uh, go any further than that. The commercially made magnetometer I was working with, uh, I'm going to do some double checking with this guy. That was good for 20,000 gauze. This is only good for about eh, 1,200, 1,500 gauze, it looks like. Well, I thought maybe before moving on, I might consider doing something a little nicer than this uh, simple little proto board with uh, the wires and everything, and everything just kind of sticking out. It, admittedly, it's so simple, it's not really worth a whole lot more effort, but it's always nice to have an you know enclosure and 
it's more trouble than it's worth to design uh, an enclosure that'll hold a, a simple proto board like this, but I thought I'd try a novel idea. A little 3D printed enclosure with this little, kind of a little, what looks like a little bed. And the idea is, um, basically I'll wire up my circuit, kind of loosely, fish it into this uh, support structure and then kind of glue it in place. And then I can just slide it in and out. And it could be uh, generic enough to be used for other projects. It just uses one screw to enclose it. And there's a couple ports here for your potentiometer and connectors. And, you know, it's something really simple where it's just, you know, a few, very few components. It's not really worth doing much more than that. Normally, I'd probably just wire it into the cord, into the wire itself, these components. And I'd probably would do that if it wasn't for the potentiometer. But, because uh, it's just three what resistors, why you bother to even do this? But I'll give this a quick try. It's kind of a nice little fun thing to try and it might be useful for other projects. So I'll assemble this and show it to you folks and see if it's any good or not. Okay, so got my uh, basically the uh, proto board version on this nice little kind of the 3D plastic printed little protoine bed tree thing. It's basically it's the same thing. I have uh, the um, R4, R3 voltage divider here in that schematic uh, that I pointed out earlier. My values are shifted a little bit. I've uh, this version I've gone with. Um, 56k ohm on uh, R3 and on R4 I went with um, a 15k and a 1k to come up with 16k and that came it divides my uh, 1.4 millivolts per division very nicely and then of course I have the potentiometer up here for the 1k to get it to um, shift my um, meter position to um, zero for either side. One side's power, one side's the uh, meter, and the other side is the uh, the uh, sensor. I decided just to use the, uh, the little plugs instead. And what I have is a ton of these little guys that I uh, got for for nothing, just tons of these, tons of these. So I you know I chop them up and hack them and glue them into things and so forth. So it, obviously you can buy some new ones and so forth. And it's the same sort of thing you do with an Arduino project where um, they, they have the headers, you have to put in headers on these guys. That's one odd thing about these little boards that I always thought was kind of odd is that you have to, you have to plug in a header. But I guess the idea is you can, you can stack a bunch in there. So it's the same concept there, I guess, basically. So, uh, this little guy just slides in, little tray slides into the unit. These two headers can stay out. The one header uh, goes in here, has to uh, pop in. If I had somebody made up for that. Where is the three guy? Here it is. Okay. So on the uh, sensor itself. So power signal ground. Of course, I, I label mine rather cryptically. Um, Gauss meter signal power ground. And hopefully that goes in there so well. I should probably cut that one too. Um, and then our power. And I should design these to be polarized so I don't uh, damage this guy. I have it labeled. You have to be really careful, as always, with these things if you don't polarize them. I, I do have one extra pin here, and I could go this way, but I need to uh, redo that wire. That was the whole point behind to do the three, and that way, if I plug it in backwards, it's always just ground, and the other one would just wouldn't be going to anything. So I need to change that. But for the moment, I'll look at that positive negative ground. Okay, And then my multimeter probe here. I also have that uh, um, labeled as positive ground or negative positive because it's the for the meter. Okay, so I got meter, uh, signal, so forth. And it's just one screw to uh, assemble this guy. And I kind of zeroed the potentiometer. It's a little tweaky to get, uh, tricky to get that last little bit sometimes, but I'm a lot closer than it would have been if it was a fixed resistor. So, uh, and of course, this would be uh, in gauze. You just got to shove that decimal. And here we go. And looks like the numbers we had before. And so there you go. It's pretty much simple as that. Here's a, a pretty good size uh, 
magnet there that pretty much gets close to the maximum that this guy can measure. And obviously it's really it, it kind of a low low uh, power obviously a gauze meter but for three dollars you know it can get you probably a lot of what you probably want to do on low projects and of course uh, you know the biggest thing is if you uh, if you're, if you're maxed out like this one this big magnet definitely maxes this guy out you know you can always come up with a standard of where you you're some distance away and call that your kind of your offset standard and you could still kind of be able to measure uh, stronger magnets this way which something is what is uh, in inexpensive as this so anyhow, else there's this version I don't know if it really makes a lot of sense but if you happen to have a 3d printer and you don't feel like um, doing a proto board wiring and then not have a case for it or you don't have any proto board material I, I don't I, I can't find proto board that very, that's very good anymore it seems like the stuff you get at least cheap anyways isn't very good stuff or you know making your own custom board obviously even only it's it's only what uh, four resistors, three resistors, it's hardly worth the bother. Obviously the more s uh, sensible thing to do is just simply put the resistors in line with some heat shrink and then either the potentiometer in there too and then seal it all up or maybe just find your voltage dividers or just live with that little offset. So anyhow, there's that guy and uh, look into this some more here. Okay, you know it, and as much as this came out pretty nice, it's still a lot of work. And really, you know, do you need to go through that much work uh, for something as simple? When really you could just do it all with just an Arduino. And, uh, you know, if you don't mind it being stuck to a um, um, your PC, you could just hook this up to your PC and uh, with a um, serial monitor window open, see the same value. So next idea is to do an Arduino project here. And just hook it up to that. The nice thing is it also has the power supply and everything so you just hook it up to your uh, USB port and you're just done and you don't even have to do anything really mechanically at all other than just simply uh, you know wire up your uh, your holotech sensor. Give that, a, <laughs> give that a try real quick. Programming on an Arduino and of course it turns out once again somebody else had already then did the wheel there, so save me a little bit of work. Let's see if I can get these hooked up again. This one goes to uh, is it Arduino Uno? I haven't heard those before. They're really handy. I mean, this is just like a what does this thing cost? Uh, 10, 15 bucks, maybe something like that. I can't remember. It's one of many I have floating around here. Plus the ground, and it goes to uh, ADD1. Plug that guy in. I was going to, once again, invent the wheel here. And it turns out, um, let's see here. Do this all in one take today if I can. Um, once again, I have to um, leave um, websites. This one was done by um, T.K. Hardeman, Hardeman at uh, Electro Schematics. I'll have to uh, definitely leave that in there. He uh, he basically just takes an art, uh, a value, scales it, and spits it back out. I had to tweak my numbers a little bit to come out closer to what I wanted, and I tweaked maybe uh, the scale of his um, his little. Um, uh, bar graph here, but you got gauze and bar graph, and it couldn't be simpler than that. And so it works very nicely. So I'm very uh, grateful for that. I'll have to uh, once again put a um, a link on that. It still isn't quite centered, but it's pretty close. For some reason, this particular um, um, Hall effect sensor seems to be slightly skewed to one side. I still haven't quite tweaked it all out, but it's pretty close. So not too bad. So. Um, and I think with that, basically, it's, I, I really couldn't say much more than that. There's another magnet, and then uh, um, another magnet here, and so, yeah, pretty cool. So, that's basically it. So, what more can I say about this guy? It's uh, $3, 
Uh, it's the um, Honeywell um, SS49E, and there's like three or four other varieties out there that you could, could buy too. I think they're all largely the same, the Hall Effect sensor. So you could do it with just your directly with your multimeter with this guy. A few little tweaks, and for three bucks, you wind up with a pretty decent uh, um, gauze meter magnetometer. And then uh, details on this guy. When I did the uh, Hall Effect, uh, the, um, the sensor for um, the commercial and my little mechanical guy. I had confidently said it was a hundred gauze at the surface, and the one uh, thing to kind of observe and think about with magnetic fields is when you're when you're measuring them. So I'm gonna go back over here. It's kind of one thing. I got one meter and one. Uh, I guess you can kind of see it over there. Hopefully, you can see that. Um, when you're measuring the magnetic field, you're measuring it straight on that surface, and there's a certain thickness to this guy, and so the die, the, the actual bit of silicone in there is, you know, buried a little slightly off to one side of the uh, piece of plastic that encases this all, and that's why you kind of want the notches. You get a little bit closer to that, but you're you're off by that tiny little distance. So if you were to go right on the surface, that's the close that's the closest you're going to get that field. If you're concerned about what the field is at a surface, now it turns out the um, commercial magnetometer I had had a much thicker um, protective case. Of course they were expecting to work with you know, 20,000 gauze rather than this piddly little you know 1500 gauze thing here. And so the thickness of that plastic case that their sensor is sitting in is, was probably at least an eighth inch thick and I bought half of that would have been you know the distance where the actual sensor was at. And this guy is about half that thickness. So if you put that on there and put this guy on here, let's so get this guy all on there, and you, you measure it. What I was declaring is that this magnet was at a hundred gauze. It turns out, you know, if you if you um, get close to that value, if I can find the peak here again, let's see if I can find the peak without seeing through it. Where, where's my peak? No more is around there. I'm getting close to 100 gauss. Yeah, anyhow, right around there. Okay, 100 gauss. So, this guy does appear to be in good agreement with the commercially made magnetometer if you account for the fact that the commercially made magnetometer was sitting further out. This guy can sit further in. And so, if you want to declare the magnetic field at the surface, you know, I'm, um, you know, what, about 350 gauss, something like that. But I guess what I, is the most useful piece of information is to know wherever your um, sensing element is is truly in the plane with if it's if it's something to do with planes. In this case, it's this uh, diaphragm. For a lot of these things, you know, you might have an assembly of magnets, and you got this field inside, and you're saying you're doing it with a, pl a plasma or something like that. You really care about what the magnetic field is inside where the plasma is, and that's, you know, where you might use a Hall effect sensor for or something like that, is you test the, your, your assembly out before you put it in your device, and you're looking for that field strength out in space, as it were, of this whole assembly, and that's where a lot of magnetometers and gauze meters are used for. Uh, for something that you're measuring on the surface, you've got to kind of count for where on the surface plane-wise to that sensor, so that's, I guess, something to take into account. When I oh so confidently said it was 100 gauze, yeah, it was 100 gauze at a distance of the plane of that sensor, which is different from this sensor. So, um, yeah, I guess it's something to account for. It's 100 gauze where it was measured, and what I really care about is the thickness uh, to this um, this diaphragm. So, if I was to eyeball it to where the diaphragm is, which I can't really quite get to here, so I know it's only about 12 thousandths off. You know, eyeballing it down there, I might say it maybe the plane at which this diaphragm is actually interacting might be 200 gauze. So it's something to think about when you're, you're doing you know measurements with a, a gauze meter. Um, it isn't like it's uh, voltages or uh, something like that where you can 
put your probes on and you say it's that voltage right there at that spot. It, it's it obviously it goes out with uh, what is it log or uh, exponential? Can't remember. So anyhow, there we go. Three dollars. Okay. In this case, it's the um, from um, Honeywell. It's the SS forty nine E. It only costs three dollars. It's just dirt simple to uh, interface, and it uh, can't get much simpler than that. So anyhow, that's it. A quick little episode from the Ed Ed, and um, buy one, give it a try. It's, it's just so simple, fun to play with at the very minimum. And uh, thanks for watching.